With divorce rates currently on the rise, mining engineer turned author Hilton Chirambandare has recently released a book to highlight this scourge. Titled Separation and Divorce, Navigating the Dark Journey, the book aims to help people navigate through this painful journey much better by dealing with the process of ending the marriage and after effects thereof. Well, to discuss this offering further, its author Hilton Chiramadari joins us now in studio. Hilton, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Morning, Sipir. Thanks for having me. I'm actually glad that uh, you have joined us uh, in studio this morning to talk about uh, this very pertinent subject, that of divorce. First of all, what propelled you to write this book? Okay, when I went through my divorce, I couldn't find an all-encompassing book that covers all the various emotions and stages that everybody goes through. So being someone who's gone through that journey, experience those emotions and come out bruised but not broken, I think I'm more than qualified to do so. So do you think uh, it served as, you know, as a very effective outlet to vent out your, your emotions? I wouldn't say anger, but your emotions or you're simply helping out people out there? Absolutely. So I've got what I call the divorce process of change curve, which mm -hmm. highlights all the different emotions that people go through. So the main aim is for you to be able to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and where you are on that journey so that we can help you to be restored and to recover. And you say that the essence of this book is to help people navigate through the painful journey of divorce. How so? Do you think that there is a remedy? Do you think that there is a publication that would help people, you know, just tread through the after effects of divorce? So that a divorce is a painful, lonely and stressful process that it involves detachment on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. There is this social detachment through the family being torn apart. And that's not just the immediate family. It also includes extended family and common friends. There is then financial detachment through the splitting of finances and assets. There is the physical detachment. Remember, this is someone you could caress and hold. This is someone you could call at any given time and bounce off an idea of them. Then there are the ensuing legal battles that people go through. And also there is the guilt and the shame as you judge yourself, and sometimes you're even judged by society. And because of, I understand that experience, I've been able to share it with, with, with everybody through the power of my pen. And as you, you went about doing some research and compiling this book, what did you find were some of the common factors that led to divorce? You can't really say there are major causes because the dynamics in each relationship are different. Um, there's a saying in my language that what covers each home is this roof. So it's only the people who stay inside that understand what is going on. Having said that, some of the causes are a lack of respect and honor, a lack of quality time or a difference in values and belief system. Sometimes it's different parenting styles or interference from extended family. And in this book, you also touch on, uh, you know, choosing partners and how settling down with an unsuitable partner is a contributing factor to divorce. And I see in the description of this book, you say that with divorce being a topical issue for both Christians and non-Christians, uh, you, cho you chose to be realistic about the dark journey that many have traveled. So how does one then uh, marry someone that they know is unsuitable? Because you know, you, you marry someone that you know that is the one. Make no mistake, my ex is a beautiful person and beautiful mother. I want to believe that I'm a good human being and I'm a great dad. However, we had our differences. So it's not about who's right or wrong, but it's a fact that perhaps her and I were different people. And I believe the reason why a lot of people encounter situations where they end up with unsuitable partners is because sometimes they're not intentional in the choices that we make or we marry for the wrong reasons. Some of those reasons including being lonely, having a child out of wedlock, bowing down to societal pressures, um, or the age and biological clock. Generally, society frowns upon a happily unmarried 35-year-old than it does an unhappily married 35-year-old. Sometimes it's thinking you can change somebody or ignoring the red flags, and then you dive into it. And speaking of that, you just said that you and your ex were different. At what point did you realize that you were different? Was it before you married her? Was it uh, in the subsistence of the marriage? And I suppose I'm asking on behalf of so many couples who, who, who said that, you know, they've encountered irreconcilable differences because of them being different. It can happen at various stages, but the more when you start living with somebody, I believe those differences become more apparent 
because you then have to live with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't believe a lot of people are terrible pe people, but it's just that when there are differences, they then magnif they get magnified and they take away the joy and the happiness that you guys used to have. And you say that no one gets into a marriage for purposes of getting a divorce. And I suppose that's the crux of this book, isn't it? Well, we don't get married to divorce. Absolutely. Till death do us part. Those are the vows we always say to each other. But in the marriage itself, we always go through a dry season. And I believe it is that dry season that defines whether the marriage will last or not. Let's take, for example, during COVID. A lot of people lost their jobs and their businesses. It's something when they both got married, they never envisioned would happen. And that failure to provide is maybe what led to the end of the marriage. And love in itself is a very strange thing. You know, sometimes we plunge into it, we ignore the red flags, and we think that tomorrow will be happily ever after until we then one day realize that this is perhaps not what we signed in for. And Hilton, from my own perspective, what were some of the emotions that are going through your mind? Guilt? Embarrassment? Shame? Absolutely, because you can be, do well in every other aspect of your life. And you can say, how can I, you know, uh, achieve so much in business, academically, but how can I fail at the marriage? Then there's the anxiety, the fear, you start wondering about what is society going to think of me? And then there's obviously always going to be noise, noise from f extended family, noise from friends, people giving you their emotions, people not always understanding what made you make your decision. So it can be a very confusing journey, which can lead to some people sinking into a depression, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, experiencing trauma. And all those negative emotions are what makes it very difficult for people to actually come out of that valley, that dark journey, and some lose their luster and they never, they become a pale version of who they used to be. Let's talk about some of the serious um, after effects of divorce that you also touch on on this book. I think the most painful thing for me, in generally speaking to a lot of people, is the pain that the children go through mm. as the couple maybe usually concentrate on their differences as opposed to looking after the best interests of the children. And for some people, it's the financial losses. Um, I was playing golf the other day yesterday, and the guy that we were playing with mm. was heralding his experience in how he lost a lot of money when, when he went through the divorce. Some never recover from, from that experience. Some lose their self-esteem. Some mm. lose mm. their ability to take care of themselves. So the reason why I wrote that book is to say to the guy or to the woman who's going through the divorce, that while it's okay to not to be okay, it's not okay to stay that way. Mm -hmm. And if I can emerge bruised and broken, so can you. A lot of people end up taking their lives. We don't want that. You know, we want people to re recover and to be restored and to heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how is this book going to help us, I mean, those who are currently struggling with their marriage going into the year 2023? They'll be able to identify the negative emotions where they are on the journey yeah. and what to do for them to restore and recover. This is a journey I've walked and these are things that I have personally done that have, have helped me come out of it to be who I am today. All right. Hilton, yeah. beautiful yeah. read. This is absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Simpio. Thank you for having me in the studio. Thank you. Okay. That was our Saturday morning guest author, Hilton Chirambandare, and uh, he's been speaking to us about his first book titled Separation and Divorce, Navigating the Dark Journey.